So you want to center aluminum, huh? Sounds easy. Spoilers, it's not. But I think we're on the right track. We've had some limited success after all. Thanks to our trusty microwaves, flux additives, and a little luck. The first piece to this is debinding, and we have a specially calibrated element, which doesn't look like much, but it is a uh, alumina refractory surrounded piece of silicon carbide, which is capable of reaching the debinding temperatures to delaminate the binder, and it doesn't exceed that. So the nice thing about this is that no matter how much you zap it in any variant of microwave, you're not going to exceed the temperature of the debinding that you uh, expect to, to reach. So that's a big win. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is placing our debinding element here inside of a, a Lumina crucible. Now, I've already positioned a little bit of ballast. I shake this around, and again, this is a uh, Lumina as well. Um, and what we do now is just place this here. Um, this side up is how I have it configured. It just means it's the closest where the, the element actually resides. So the heat is going to concentrate there a little bit better. And we just place this at the bottom of the crucible. We do put a little bit of uh, ballast, um, just a little. We don't want too much heat concentrating down below. Um, but we then just give it a small shake and we'll be covering the surface of this element so that our part can then rest on top so that it can be debound. That's looking pretty good. We have a decent layer on top. We don't want to make it too, uh, too large of a layer because we have to fit our last element, uh, which is going to be able to do the uh, centering. Um, there is another step which involves a layer of, of zinc. Uh, putty. You probably could get away with just some zinc, uh, raw zinc. Maybe um, try it out and test it, and you know, post your results and uh, see if you can share that. Uh, I think everyone will probably learn something. So, again, very much a little experimental at this point, but I'm going to be taking uh, a little bit of this and sprinkling it around each layer. What I mean by a layer is. Uh, just a small portion of covering from uh, from the ballast that will be covering our final part. So this is our first layer, and our part is going to be this this Hanya mask. So a layer may come up to here. We'll sprinkle some, then up to here. We'll sprinkle some more, and so on and so forth until we have at least a little bit of coverage of the zinc uh, around the part. I've got these supports off of this one, and also to note, I have made a small mound of ballast just because this has a sort of hollow backing area, and what I'm going to do is press this part into that ballast so that it's going to be supported from the back. Just like that, so it's resting somewhere in the center here. I am going to then just give a slight shake just to make sure we've got that covered. And one more press and twist. And now we are good there. Okay, so just like that, um, we have a fully covered part. And just so that I can show for completeness what I meant, this is the centering element. This just has to fit here uh, with enough clearance, which as you can see, it does. And as long as we can do that, we will be able to center this piece in the microwave. And I say microwave singularly, but I will probably be using all of my microwaves. I have a 1100 watt, a 600 watt, and a 900 watt. And I'll probably be using those throughout this cycle to uh, perform the debind as well as moving into the center. The last preparation step for the debind is to um, cover with a lid. You probably don't have to do this. I do this so that uh, not all of the smoke comes out in the microwave since this is a lot quicker process uh, than it would be inside of the standard kiln. Uh, normally that's a very gradual uh, release of this, the smokes. 
but um, this special lid here just has a few holes which release uh, some of that gas and the the oxygen introduction in here is actually pretty important for the debind phase so that you uh, you properly delaminate all of that all of that binder and uh, are left with a clean part to center Okay, so the debinding phase is done. So that's it, right? We're all done? Well, slow down, Rocket Pants. We're not done because we have to take this off and now we have to introduce the flux additive as well as a little bit of centering carbon so that we can get this centered properly. Surprising enough, based off of my previous measurements, we should be able to reach from an ambient temperature of 400 degrees up to about 1400 degrees in only 15 minutes. Now, why 1400? Well, I just feel like we need to go a little higher for this aluminum test uh, to let the flux activate. And uh, if it melts, it melts. It's not a big deal if it melts because we would still have a solid aluminum piece. So that should tell us something. So there's a big chance that maybe I've just been trying to center too low. And I just want to rule that out tonight. I'd also like to thank tonight's sponsor, Vashtina. Okay, so take note of the shell, if that's, uh, well, that's what I'm going to call it, the shell that's surrounded the part. We're going to go ahead and break this open and see what we have internally. Looking promising, we have broken around the external pieces here. Uh, it, it can be sometimes a little tricky to see where the part is versus where the shell lies. But if you can kind of see that, I believe this is horns uh, for the mask and this is the front and the inset here into the back, uh, well, is the back, so. Again, I have no idea how this is. Um, this is totally formed yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit and see if this first attempt uh, did all right. I have a slightly fractured mask here. I can't speak onto the strength of it just yet. There does appear to be a little bit of metallic grain. Again, this is attempt one out of three if we need it. Hopefully we don't need three attempts. This is a pretty challenging piece to center. The walls are pretty thin and uh, the geometries are a little bit more complex. But things like like the horns over here, um, this seemed preserved. The layer lines seem preserved. Um, I think the only thing left to do with this test is to see uh, what a good whacking will do. And uh, we'll uh, make adjustments here to see for the next center uh, again. We have two more in the queue, but let's see what we have. Please be strong. Please be strong. Well, interesting. Sounds pretty metallic. 
cool. I'm going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner and see if we can get some of this little bit of ballast off so that we can just compare against the metal here. Where have we gotten with this little piece? Well, it does hold up to touching and hitting and tapping, as you can see. That sounds like metal. It doesn't seem to have the full strength that I would expect from an aluminum part, but honestly, I think this really just needs to have a little bit longer hold time. What I was testing really was to see is my debind cycle appropriate and is my center cycle appropriate. The debind seems to be okay, otherwise, I would expect. Well, drop that, and we withstood a fall on concrete, minus the horn. So, it's metallic-ish, <laughs> um, impromptu test. But, wow, I, I just did it again. Vorsteiner, stop sponsoring this video. Okay, I, I swear I won't be dropping it for a third time. But that was about four and a half or so on concrete. And we didn't smash into a million pieces. So back to what I was saying was if this didn't debind properly, I would not expect to see things like the, the teeth and the nose and the eyes and all of the layer lines to be recorded so properly. So I think the debinding is correct. And the only thing that I believe we need to do is center for a little bit longer. Again, we have two more in the queue. This was the first test of finalizing a process for aluminum. And I'm going to count that as a small win.